Welcome to our video project on the Nine Principles of Policing by Sir Robert Peel. Born in 1788, he went on to become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom twice and he established the London Metropolitan Police Force in 1829. It was then he set out the Nine Principles of Policing which have set the standard for modern day policing. We will show how the principles are still relevant today and have a profound impact, impact on how policing is conducted around the world. Our story begins with Sir Robert Peel pondering about the principles he would create. My name is Sir Robert Peel, and I have developed nine principles in relation to policing. They are as follows. The basic mission for which police exist is to prevent crime and disorder as an alternative to repression of crime and disorder by military force and the severity of illegal punishment. Robert Peel's second principle, to recognize always that the power of the police to fulfill their functions and duties is dependent on public approval of their existence, actions, and behaviors, and on their ability to secure and maintain public respect. Peel's principle number two. The degree of public approval is determined by how the public citizens view the actions and behavior of the police officers. If the police are loyal, responsible, and respectful to the public, they will be will more willing to cooperate with the police officers. An example of this is the importance of community policing. My third principle is the police must secure the willing cooperation of the public in voluntary observance of the law to be able to secure and maintain public respect. Going hand in hand with the third principle is the fourth principle of policing. The degree of cooperation of the public that can be secured diminishes proportionately to the necessity of the use of public force and compulsion of achieving police objectives. Hey, hey, did you hear me? Did you hear me? What? What? Take those headphones out. Hey, hey, hey. that's my skateboard. Give me that skateboard. Hey, no. <laughs> it's my skateboard. What the hell, man? Sit on the stairs. I tried to tell him, man. Dude, just calm down. I'm not a dude. I'm not a man. I'm Officer Rivieri. Do you understand that? Whatever, dude. We're just I'm not a dude. Do you understand that? I don't know. Eric, shut up. Your friends have some common sense. They know when to sit down. Be respectful of the law. When you're disrespecting me, you're disrespecting this badge in this department. Do you understand that? No. Now, what's your name? Eric. Eric what? Eric Bush. Eric Bush? And Eric Bush, where do you live? On the south side. Where on the south side do you live, Eric Bush? I don't know. You don't know where you live? I'm going to call my mom. Yeah. That's good. Maybe I can explain this situation to her. Yeah, maybe you can. Explain how disrespectful you've been. So what's your address, Mr. Bush? I don't know. My mom can tell you. You don't know what your address is? No. I forgot. You forgot what your address is? Yeah. Well, why don't you pull out your phone and I'll talk to your mother. <laughs> Mr. Bush, can you hear me? No, I can't. <laughs> Sir Robert Peel's fifth principle. The police seek and preserve public favor, not by catering to public opinion, but by constantly demonstrating absolutely impartial service to the law, in complete independence of policy, and without regard to the justice or injustice or the substance of individual laws, by ready offering of individual service and friendship to all members of the society, without regard to their race or social standing, by ready exercise of courtesy and friendly good humor, and by ready offering of individual sacrifice in protecting and preserving life. Sir Robert Peel's fifth principle of policing. Everybody is deemed equal before the law, and police are to provide uh, equality of service to all citizens. The ability to get the same service and treatment despite the fact of your political connections. It separates pol political decision making from operational er, decision making, enforcing the law and not criticizing it. Wealth and social standing should not affect the level of service received today. Police should be colorblind.
example of the fifth principle in modern day policing is the downtown east side where Kieran is able to set aside economic and political standing and bias to provide equal treatment to all citizens. My sixth principle of policing is the police should use physical force to the extent necessary to secure the observance of the law or restore order only when exercise of persuasion, advice, and warning is found to be insufficient to achieve the police objectives. And the police should use only the minimum degree of physical force which is necessary on any particular occasion for achieving a police objective. Police should use the least amount of force required and be reasonable with their use of force. However, police organizations also abide by the plus one doctrine, which asserts that police should use one level of force above the force they encounter. The emphasis of modern day policing is also on the use of persuasion and warnings before any physical force is applied. Today, out of every interaction the public has with the police, force is applied only 0.07% on average. This is according to research by Dr. Christine Hall for the Canadian Police Research Center. So Robert Peel's seventh principle. The police at all times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. The police are the only members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interest of the community welfare. by avenging individuals or the state or authoritatively judging guilt or punishing the guilty. Not guilty of the jar charges brought before the court. Hey, you, watch your back. I know you're guilty. I'm gonna find you. Yeah? The ninth principle of policing by Sir Robert Peel is to recognize always that the test of police efficiency is the absence of crime and disorder and not the visible evidence of police dealing with them. So police efficiency meant in those days both good value for policing and if it achieved their desired outcomes. The goal of police should be the absence of crime and disorder, both in 1829 and to this day. These are my nine principles which going forward the police should carry out in their daily duties. We hope you have enjoyed we hope you have enjoyed our video on the nine principles of policing by Sir Robert Peel. We have outlined that despite their creation in 1829, they are still just as relevant today. The world is a much different place than it was 185 years ago. However, the principle that the public the police are the public and the public are the police is still true to this day, as are the rest of the principles he created. We believe that if Sir Robert Peel were here today, he would be proud of the, how his principles of policing have shaped current policing practices. Thank you for watching. Oh my God. For you, Mr. McConnell.